Hey everybody, this is Anna. Welcome to the new moon spread for February the 15th. So the last two weeks, we've been in the middle of a full moon season, which is a time when we step back from actively manifesting and start to relax, to rejuvenate, and to process anything that has been stirred up in us. So it actually is a time of pretty powerful healing and cleansing, um, which means that during the full moon cycle, often junk comes to the surface. Um, now, I will say for myself and for people I've worked with, the last couple of weeks have been really strong clearing times, like a lot of junks come to the surface. And um, it is not pleasant when the junk comes to the surface. But the good news is it's an opportunity because when it comes to the surface, if you recognize it for what it is, if you recognize it for an opportunity, you can seek out the source of the junk which will lead you to the wound that is probably you've been carrying for, you know, a long, long time, right? So you clear out that wound, you heal it, and then suddenly you're restored in a completely new way. So if in the last two weeks you've discovered, you feel kind of edgy or, or maybe you your emotional, you know, equanimity has been thrown and you feel very nervous or depressed or whatever it is, you might, hopefully you recognized it for what it was, which is the clearing out and you were able to get the support you need or to do it yourself to get to the heart of it and to clear it. In which case, you're ready for the new moon work. So this trajectory is about what we can do in the next two weeks with this newfound restoration. The first question we have is, what have I released since the full moons? This would be like the work we've been doing during the full moon cycle. And we have the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords is... Um, She's got her sword raised. She's ready to help us get free of the things which are confusing us, deluding us, the things which we don't need anymore. So she's a very like sharp energy kind of person. She's logical. She's powerful. And she means well. What she isn't is loving or snuggly or passionate. She's very cold and calculated. Sometimes we need that energy. But a good portion of the time, that energy can also uh, snuff out in us our access to other wisdom, the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of the soul. So it could be that in the last two days, we've had to release from ourselves the need to be strategic and logical, the need to kind of distance ourselves and be like cold and calculating. Maybe it's time for us to come to the world with a new awareness of our heart, what our heart is asking for, what our emotions are telling us, what our body is telling us. So in the last couple of days, the last couple of weeks, we could have been releasing mindsets, which were designed to keep us safe in the world by not letting us connect. But now it's time to connect. Okay, the second question is, where am I now? We have another queen. We have the queen of pentacles reversed. So the queen of pentacles is like an earth mother energy. She is about the physical realm. So she's about material wealth and physical well-being. She's about, um, you know, good food and lots of money and, and doing things with your hands, you know, getting massages and like feeling out your body, feeling powerful and strong in your body. She is a nurturing character. So she's basically the one who manifests the abundance so everybody else can have everything that they want. In this image, you'll see she's sitting in a very verdant area. You've got this little rabbit running across the scene, which is about fertility. So she is the, the all-providing mother energy. The reversal of the card might suggest that we are getting in touch with this energy within ourselves. We realize that we actually do hold the power within us, not only to provide what we need, but to provide whatever we want, because the universe is responding to our desire. It could also remind us that our, our ability to manifest isn't just for the sake of others. Upright, the queen's kind of taking care of other people. That's sort of her, her gig. The reversal could say, remind us that our manifesting is not just to make the world better, but actually for ourselves. Like it makes sense. It's good for us to serve ourselves and to listen to our own heart's desires and to, to create a world which really supports us. Now, the other thing the reversal might suggest is that we were not able to do all of the work we needed to do during the full moon cycle. And we're a little bit stuck in connecting with this energy in ourselves. That could be a block for us. So if you discover now that you're having a hard time believing that you're this character, or maybe you believe it, but you just can't quite get in touch with it, it could be that you didn't complete some of the healing and clearing work that needed to happen over the last two weeks. And this would suggest maybe, you know, you want to go back and pick up that work because you want to, you want more of this lady in your life. <laughs> so what is emerging within me? This is the next, um, the next question. And we have the world card. 
Now this is interesting because the world card is the final card in the trajectory of the major arcana. This is the end of the spiritual journey. So this is the point at which you have accomplished what you set out to do. It's a time to celebrate, to acknowledge that you are amazing. You've done amazing work and to celebrate and to enjoy it. This is a garland, you can see, and that's a, that's a sign of celebration. The woman's in the middle. She's dancing naked, which tells us that she is happy, complete, and free in her own skin. She's dancing in the air. So, you know, just like it's a very clear experience of acknowledging what we have accomplished. And I think that's important because a lot of times in my life, I can say in a lot, a lot of other people's lives, we are always focused on what we have not yet accomplished. We forget this step, which is when you see what you've done, know that you're powerful, celebrate that you're amazing and, um, and take the time to do that. Um, now, the good thing about this card as well is that it's a circle. So not only does the circle represent an ending, it represents a new beginning. So this card will tell us that, you know, you need to know you've done what you've done. You need to write it down, you know, close that chapter, bless it so that you can start the next thing. So it's not like we're going to just set, rest on our laurels here and say, oh, I did my thing and now I'm done. But you can't just constantly go forward without ever seeing that you've done this. So maybe this is what's emerging in us right now. We need to acknowledge what we've done to set us up for our next adventure. The next question is, what do I wish to grow? We have the nine of swords reversed. So the nine of swords upright, you can see is a card of deep anxiety. This woman is either sitting up in the middle of the night because she's had a nightmare or night terrors or, or she can't sleep because she's so worried. Because it's a swords card, which is about the mind, we know that what she's worried about is not in the real world. It's in her mind that she's reacting to fears, anxieties, beliefs that are plaguing her. Now, the reversal of the card suggests to me that someone has passed through this kind of anxiety. Now, the way it speaks to me, and I think maybe it will speak to other people who do work similar to mine, is that I wish to grow in my life the ability to help people turn this card over. I do believe that the, all the evils of our world spring from this mindset of anxiety. It could, whether it's racism or poverty or violence, it's coming from the basic feeling that we are not safe in the world. And the reason we feel unsafe is not because the world is not safe. It's because our minds are confused and think we are unsafe. If we can get to the heart of that belief, and clear it and free it, we become the natural people we are called to be, which is at peace with the world, at peace with each other. So when I see this, this card showing up and what do I wish to grow, I think what it says to me, I wish to grow the ability to help people turn their anxiety over so that this world can be healed from what I think plagues it the most. That may or may not resonate with you depending on what your calling is in the world. And the next question is, how can I bring my goals and intentions to fruition? We have the nine of pentacles. So I actually love this card. It's just a lovely card. This woman's in a garden. You know, she's dressed very richly and she's surrounded by all these pentacles, which represent, you know, physical wealth. So this card is about just letting yourself be in the place of abundance, enjoying it and claiming it as your own. Clearly, this is her garden, right? It's her garden. So there's something about this card which says, you know, luxuriate in the fact that you are surrounded by a blessing that you are provided for. Now, it might seem like those don't go together because one is like releasing anxiety for others and this one's about experiencing joy yourself. But if you think about it, they are actually the same thing. This is the answer to the anxiety card. Because when you feel like you're surrounded by blessing, you are supported by the universe, everything you need is at your fingertips, you no longer have the feeling of endangerment. You realize you are at home in the world and you are safe. And so what this tells me is I need to live in this place of feeling like I am cared for, all is at my fingertips. Um, you know, I just can luxuriate in the garden of this amazing world we live in. And if I can live in that place, I can bring other people to that place. I can solve their anxiety by helping them visit my oasis of calm. Additionally, these are both nine cards, the nine of swords and the nine of pentacles. So they are almost like balancing each other out. But this is the one we want to win the balance. The final question is, what additional resources are available to me as I manifest my goals? 
We have another swords card. We have the seven of swords reversed. So when I look at this card, I think of it as strategic planning around your beliefs and your expectations. This fellow is stealing swords, right? He's sneaking around stealing swords from enemy camps and stuff. So, I mean, you could say he's a bad guy, but this is a seven card, which is about discernment. So you could see this card as we have to take what we need in order to build the right life for ourselves. Now, this is different from the queen of swords, which showed up before, and the nine of swords, which is about like, you know, cutting out the things that don't work or things that are drive our beliefs that are driving us crazy with anxiety. This is about being strategic about what you agree to. Beliefs in our minds are just things we've repeated over and over to ourselves until they become real. So this card is about being strategic, picking what you want carefully and not allowing the swords in your life you don't want. This is a reverse card, which tells me that this is something we have to do in, inside of ourselves. We cannot allow other people to give us belief systems and just agree to them blindly. We have to pick them. We have to own them. We have to consciously pick the things that match us um, because that's, that's where our mind can catch up to our heart and our, and our mind and our bodies and our hearts, our souls. So the mind is trapped often in belief systems because it's habituated to them. But if you pick different belief systems and habituate the mind to those, um, yeah, that's the ticket to getting the mind to go with you in this new journey. So I hope that's helpful to you. It sounds like this will be a really neat two weeks. I would love to hear how this resonates with you and how it opens up for you in the next two weeks. Have a happy new moon. See you later. Bye.